there, Susanna Benison here. So, last year, I uploaded a big video showing how I made lots of little Mudokan plushies, and a few big ones, before finally ending up with this big detailed talking ape. Well, the group has somewhat changed since then, and so I thought I'd make a little update video showing what the collection is like now, and the stories behind some of the newer ones. So, before we get into the many Mudokans, I have to make a disclaimer, and no one is gonna like this, but none of these guys are for sale. Ah. I'm really sorry. It's not because I don't want to do commissions, actually I would love to. I genuinely enjoy making these guys, that's why there's so many of them. But the thing is, they're not my characters, I don't have the rights to them, I don't have the right to make money off them, and I used official art to help me make the pattern. Specifically, this one and this one. I wouldn't care so much if Oddworld was a huge company like, say, Hasbro or Sega, who already make a ton of stuff with their characters' faces on it for people to buy. I don't feel like paying someone to make a higher quality plush of a character is really stealing from a market when it's that big. But merchandising needs money to make the stuff in the first place. Money that I don't think Oddworld Inhabitants has. And before you go nuts thinking I'm showing pity to a multi-million dollar corporation, that's not what this is at all. Oddworld Inhabitants is independent. They are tiny. I think even at their most successful, they only had, what, 50 people working there? If that. And that's a good thing. I think that's what's kept them humble and down to earth. The fact is, they have been really good to me. They've been incredibly warm and encouraging. I, I love her. And uh, Susanna Benison, she has done a lot of knitting. She's fantastic. And uh, she made she made Lauren and Sherry these beautiful Abe and Al figures. And she, they're sewn, they're sewn. I don't know. Girl, I don't know. I'm so sorry. So I feel like making I secret money been. behind their backs using their characters would just be a total spit in the face to them. And I won't do it. So yeah. bottom line, I won't sell these guys unless our world inhabitants gives me explicit permission to do so. Right, now we've addressed that meech in the room, let's get to the collection! If you've already watched my first video, I'll link that too down below, some of these you will recognise, but some you won't. First up, the first one I ever made is Troll Ape. Or at least Troll Ape as he looks now. This is one of several Mudokans that as my skills developed I eventually took apart and remade. Better this time. And no one needed that makeover more than this guy, seriously, it was so obvious I had no idea what I was doing. So, does he look better now? Yes he does, but to be honest, uh, I'm still not completely satisfied with him. I put his eyes too low on his face, an easy mistake to make as Abe is very baby-faced in Soulstorm, and his stitches are too thin and they're not symmetrical like they are in the games. Gotta hand it to his mum, she did a good neat job. Uh. Oh my god, that joke was so dark, I'm sorry. So, at some point this Abe will get a face change. Next up is Abe number 2, one of my favourites in the collection, purely because he was the first Abe that I was satisfied with. However, he too has been reconstructed. For my first three Abes, I got the colour wrong on the insides of their arms and the soles of their feet. Mudokans are paler in those areas, but initially I only made the chest piece pale, which was wrong. Abe number 3 was sent away before I could fix this, but when I remade Troll Abe and Abe number 2, I made sure to adjust their colours. This is the guy I interact with most, I take lots of pictures of him, he pops up all over my house, so he's quite the adventurer. Abe number 3 is the one Abe with the inaccurate colouring. He went off to live with the YouTuber and high profile Oddworld fan Cad Icarus. The last I saw of him was a picture taken on Caddy's windowsill, so I know he got there safely. I haven't seen him since, so I don't know what Caddy has done with him. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! There he is! There he is! There's my tiny Abe sitting on Caddy's windowsill! No wonder I didn't notice him before! He's being shielded by a... I have no idea what that is. But to be fair, that's exactly what I asked Caddy to do. I didn't know how the material I'd used would hold up to being in direct sunlight, so just to be safe, I asked Caddy to keep Abe out of the sun. And that's exactly what he's done! Okay, I'm happy now. I know where he is, and I know where to look in Caddy's future videos. He's sitting in Caddy's office and he watches him make videos, that's wonderful. Next is the original incredibly lumpy elf I made because I didn't know how to work with stretchy knit fabric yet. This guy is due to be reconstructed at some point. 
possibly into an elf, maybe not. Then there's this Toby, who is technically new, but was made out of old pieces. He was reconstructed from this Toby. I really like the expression on this one. He looks so worried. He still needs the straps, the pockets, and logos on his dungarees. But those are time-consuming, and I haven't made them yet. Next up is the Golden Trio. So named because they are the Abe, Alf, and Toby I was allowed to send to America. To Lorne Lanning and Sherry McKenna. I don't know much about what happened to these three once they arrived, but... But I believe that you have some of my work in your house. Somewhere. Is it the, is it the dolls? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do have them. They're in at the moment they're in storage because I'm moving. <laughs> but those are those are wonderful. So. Thank you. Yeah. Are, we love them. Am I allowed one squee? Yeah, I'm allowed one squee. <laughs> Honestly, that still blows my mind. The fact that these two people, whose work I admire so much, they actually own stuff that I made with my own two hands. Though, fun fact. My initial plan was not to send these three to Lorne and Sherry directly. Where I actually wanted to send them was Oddworld's main office. See, during Soulstorm's development, Oddworld was working with distributed teams around the world, but they also had this central hub in Emeryville. I've seen pictures and videos of the place and it looks amazing. Just a really lovely place to work, I want to work here! And it's full of shelving, because of all the reference books they've got. So, my initial thought was that the trio would spend most of their time on display on one of these bookshelves, but occasionally the staff might take them on little adventures around the office. I had thoughts of them peeking out from behind computer monitors and running from the balls on the pool table and sitting on the coffee bar, because that's the kind of stuff I was doing with them, and I wanted all the staff at Oddworld to enjoy them. Sadly though, because of what happened in 2020, the main office had to be closed. And I'm not sorry these three ended up where they did. If they give Lorne and Sherry even a fraction of the enjoyment that I've got over the years from Oddworld, then that's enough. And no, I don't think I will ever be over it. So I've gushed about that for long enough. Back to my collection. This is my Mudokan drawer. <laughs> so in here, we've got another couple of Abe's. These are the last two which were made from the costume trousers which started this whole project off. I got seven Abe's out of those trousers in the end. Three have gone, Lorne and Sherry's, Caddy's, and the last one which I gave to one of my mum's carers. These two are being kept as gifts for other people I know. Now, here's where things get a little different. This is my classic Abe. He was made using an old shirt I had which happened to exactly match the colours of Abe's sprites in the original Odyssey and Exodus, so I considered it a worthy sacrifice. Then there's this guy, made from the same shirt, and if any of you have the Oddworld art books, you will recognise this Abe as being based on the original concept art by Stephen Olds, so he's different even from the Abe we see in the classic games. He's got black feathers instead of coloured ones. This is brushed out acrylic yarn by the way, and it's super soft. My intention for this Abe is actually to send him to Stephen Olds, if he's willing to accept him. I've still got my mud sona, Cheryl, but I decided to take another crack at her because I wasn't satisfied with her the first time. This one has smaller eyes, and I think she looks a lot better, but I'm still not sure about what to do with her feathers. I wanted them to be long, but I didn't want to copy Abe's ponytail or the Keeper's, so ugh, that's going to need some more thought. Fun fact about Cheryl is I imagine her as a subspecies of Mudokan based on water birds, so she's got webbed hands and feet like a duck. Normal Mudokans swim like stones, but she doesn't. She's a good swimmer. She's what I wish the grubs had been in Stranger's Wrath. I'm sorry, I just don't like them. I think they're obnoxious. If I had my way, they would be replaced with Mudokans like Cheryl, specially adapted for the water. Different, but still familiar. Also in Cheryl's species, the genderless workers usually identify as female instead of male, just to even the gender ratio up a bit. I love the odd boys, but seriously, the only female characters we've seen so far are the Chief of the Grubs, Keeper, and some of the Clackers. And the only one of those I find tolerable is Keeper. Speaking of Keeper, here she is! She's also not finished, but she is well on her way. I think the most time-consuming part of her is done, which is the feathers. She just now needs all of her clothes and her details, of which there are many. Oh, what have I done? <laughs> 
Moving up a size, a lot of the prototype large Abes are no longer here. The first one actually won me an official Obworld fan art competition, and that's how I got my own copy of Soulstorm. And the old box. He retired to live with a friend. The one who went to my relatives in Europe still lives there. He's looking a little worse for wear because he's been played with, but that's okay. I'd much rather he was played with and loved than forgotten about. As for the others, much to my guilt, they ended up being deconstructed so that their stuffing could be harvested for other projects. That's oddly fitting now I think of it. And here is my magnum opus, my pride and joy, my literal child. Some people have baby dolls and I have this guy, the Abe who was the end goal of the whole last video. He's not pristine anymore because he's been carried around and cuddled, but I still adore him. He still talks, and in fact, he's got a few new phrases. About a year ago, a young man calling himself Blanky turned up on the Oddworld Discord server. The rest of the internet might also know him as Bop It Artist or TGR, and he was doing what was, quite honestly, the most accurate fan Abe voice I have ever heard. Don't drink that! Don't drink that! Cause, uh, if brews made by Gluckins, it's probably bad for you. Cause if brews made by Gluckins, it's probably bad for you. This is bad. What do I do now? This is bad. What do I do now? Help me rescue the rest of them. Help me rescue the rest of them. I've heard a lot of fans do Abe and Ludokan voices, really good ones at that. But when I first heard this guy, I had to do a double take to make sure it wasn't Lorne himself trying to prank us. In fact, Blanky's Abe is so convincing that Oddworld inhabitants themselves asked him to do a version of Jingle Bells that Christmas as Abe. Jingle Bells, Bullock's Bells, Toby drove the train. Let's go take the soul store brew, but duck it's are in pain. And so many people asked if it was Lorne. <laughs> It was not. It was Blanky. Not that Long can't pull off a tune in Abe's voice. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Naturally, a ton of us jumped on Blanky immediately requesting Abe dialogue, and I was one of them. But over the next few months, he and I developed a genuine friendship, playing games, doing little radio plays together, and even a short film. <laughs> you okay there, buddy? You a bit battered and bruised? Don't even talk to me! Just letting our creativity bounce off each other. Blanky is a lovely guy, and unprompted by me, he offered to do some custom dialogue for my plush. So, while most of the time if you set him off, Abe's voice will be Lorne's, because the dialogue came from Soulstorm, occasionally the voice will be Blanky's, and when it is, he'll even address me by name. Hey, it's a Blanky line! And another one? Don't worry, Susie. I'm here. <laughs> he knows my name. <laughs> okay, technically he's meant to do all of these lines at random, but I've found that he often goes in alphabetical order instead, so if he laughs once, usually it'll be the other laughs straight after, so let's see if he'll do that. Let me help you. No! You cheeky thing. Honestly, as if my Abe plush couldn't become any more unique and precious. There'll be more about Blanky in a moment. For now, let's complete the collection. So, you know when I said at the end of the last video that now I had a large Abe, I would have to make Alf and Toby too? Well, I got my hands on some green polyester and did just that, and here they are. But, big surprise, they're not finished yet. What's missing? Pockets, caps, and in Toby's case, straps on his dungarees. I don't know, I have no excuse for this. Making Moodokens is fun, making clothes for them is boring. My big Alf and Toby don't talk, but if someone ever extracts their voice files from Soulstorm, that could change. <coughs> Evil banana, please and thank you. <coughs> Almost lastly is this guy, who was purely an experiment with some new material I've found, and um, he's a total failure. <laughs> The colour is too pale, and I picked pom-poms that were too big for the eyes. I think what I might do with this guy one day is deconstruct him and then squash down the pattern. I think it would be cute to make a baby Abe whose skin colour perhaps hasn't set in yet, so the paler colour makes more sense. A future project. I've got to finish all the others I started first. And after that, there's only one left. And he's quite a special one. He's my mini magnum opus.
This is Abe as he appears in the fan project Oddworld Element. So I have to establish that Blanky was doing all of this custom voice work for free. And sure, it was fun for him, but he also worked really hard and I felt I should compensate him. So I made him an Abe based on his own Oddworld story. Oddworld Element is a fan project put together by Blanky with the help of Axel and Mockingbird as an imagining of how the original Oddworld Quintology might conclude. See, Oddworld was meant to be a five-part series, with each instalment introducing a new lead character. Abe was always going to be the main main protagonist, but he'd have a little posse building up around him. The plans for this went off the rails immediately after Odyssey came out, as Sony demanded a new Abe game and that's how we got Exodus in less than a year. Exodus, fan favourite though it is, is considered a side story, not Chapter 2. Munch's Odyssey was meant to be the real Chapter 2, which was meant to be followed by Squeak's Odyssey, but they detoured to make Stranger's Wrath, which didn't do well, and that's how Oddworld closed the first time. After a decade of hiatus, they decided to restart the Quintology and keep the focus entirely on Abe, which I approve of. Sometimes you need to adjust your focus when things get too complicated. I've been that storyteller. It's fine. <laughs> so Soulstorm, the remake of Exodus, is now the new Chapter 2. Everybody got that? Good! But that left the original Quintology story, with the original Abe and Munch, unfinished. So Blanky's decided to do something about that. I've read through what they've done so far, and my impression is positive. There's a Slig character, Reg, who's a lot of fun. It's always nice to see Sligs on a different side of the conflict, and because they're such snarky ratbags, he's got good chemistry with Abe. The villain is a particularly scary and sadistic Glucken named Crackle, which is great because Gluckens are usually not intimidating without an army of Sligs to back them up. As Munch is still in the mix, their main setting is a harbour area for him called Drown Docken. Get it? Drown? Dock? Because it's a harbour? And we Dockens don't swim? That's just wrong. Blanky and his team have paid really close attention to recreating the feel and personality of the original Oddworld series, which all the best fan fictions try to do. So I look forward to seeing how it develops. Abe has an adjusted design for Element to symbolise his new growth and maturity. His feathers are longer, that's an entire cat toy I had to sacrifice there, and he has a new loincloth. He's wearing sandals, thank goodness, and he's also got some new mystical tattoos up his arms. And because I like to make my creations do cool things, he also glows in the dark. In a few days, I'll pack him up and send him off to Blanky. I have to say, I'm going to miss him. Oh, good grief, there's also these as well. These are my attempts to make Abe's little Queen Bee pendant guide from Soulstorm. For the tiny ones, I just painted the bee onto a blob of hot glue, but I decided to be a bit more ambitious with the larger size. This is my very first time working with resin. I crafted the bees first out of Fimo clay and wire, then painted them. The wings are tiny pieces of tracing paper, so they're semi-translucent. I made several so that I could choose which was the best to put with my Abe, but like most of my projects, none of them are finished yet! <laughs> so with that, that's my homemade Mudokans. Almost all of them. The ones who still live with me, and the ones who flew the nest to new homes. Will I make more? Almost certainly, though I think I need to dedicate a bit of time to finishing up the ones I've got already. But I wouldn't have made so many if I didn't find it fun. I've had a very difficult few years, for reasons beyond my control, and completely separate from the misery that was 2020. I won't go into details, but let's just say that earlier I mentioned carers, and I will add the word dementia and leave it at that. Making Mudokens gave me something to focus on and a bit of a lift, and if you take into account how many I've made without the intention of selling them, that might give you an idea of how many times I needed that lift. I am so lucky that Soulstone came out when it did. This big story in a rich, detailed world that I could lose myself in. Perhaps I needed it more than I knew. It meant so much to reconnect with this story I fell in love with 26 years ago, when I was way too young to understand what it was really all about. It's helped me make friends, it helped me connect better with myself and what I like to do. And if Lorne and Sherry decided to walk away completely when Stranger's Wrath didn't do well all those years ago, 
I couldn't have made those friends, or made these things. But they didn't walk away. They decided to try again, and I can only wish them the very best of luck finishing the story this time, and I'll support them in whatever way I can. Soulstorm isn't perfect, but it has done a lot for me, reignited inspiration within me, and kept me going through some very dark times. I would say that I could never repay Lorn and Sherry and their team for that, but you know what? On this occasion I could. And I did. Thank you for watching. Guys, Alf's arm just fell off. <laughs> Alf's arm just, just fell off. See, this is the reason why, aside from not wanting to wreck my relationship with our well inhabitants, I'm not selling these guys. Because th th I can't sell this. This is ridiculous. Oh, well, Alf's due for some arm surgery, I guess. <laughs>